So here is a tourmaline cabochon and a little color change garnet that's got a little uh, changes from sort of a teal to a little bit purple. Now the way I envision this ring is the silver is going to come and kind of curve around the cabochon and then come out further and curve around the little garnet and over here we have a little split shank. So in actual fact you've got a split shank on both sides of your ring and then I'm going to put some texture on. It's a very simple drawing. It doesn't tell us every detail that we need to know because I'm going to figure out those details as I go. But I can look at this and I can figure out some sequence. One thing I always start with is to get the gemstone settings made. I'm going to need to make a bezel for this cabochon and I need to make or find a little setting for this uh, little garnet. If you have those things set, then it's easier to work the rest of the metal around your nice rigid metal pieces and you know exactly how much space they take. So I need some bezel material. I've got some here. It's a little bit tall, but that's okay. We can shorten it down if we need to. And uh, I'll use make the oval, solder it together, and then solder it on a piece of sheet metal all sterling silver. So the first thing I would do is take some half round pliers. You want a plier that has a, a flat and a round so that you can not put more tool marks into something than you need to. And you put the curving jaw where you're going to curve your metal. That's a pretty no-brainer, I think. So we'll kind of curve it around. There's a bit of a flare or a taper to these, so you want to make sure you don't put a taper or flare into your your bezel, so do be careful and do the angles. See, I've got that wall slanting a little bit. I'm going to have to correct that and make sure it's not slanting. And one way that you can see easily what you're doing, use a piece of white paper or card or something to look look against, and it will give you a good profile and let you see light. Get, I'm exaggerating it here for you, but you can see against the white very easily how much space you've got there. Against this, it's going to be harder to see. This will really give you a much more graphic representation. Cabochons are slippery. I drop them all the time. So make sure you move the tools out from underneath your bench pin because you really don't want to damage your gemstone by dropping it on a steel piece of steel file or something. That's a good good piece of advice. You can saw it, you can snip it, whatever you like. But once you do that, you need to take a, a file and straighten up and flatten that end before you solder it so that they meet nicely. I'm going to solder this with hard solder because it's an initial operation. Um, do all the operations you can with your harder solder before you decide to move to a lower temperature solder, but that's um, that way you, you give yourself better opportunity to uh, keep your piece together. So I'm going to take this bezel, I'm going to dip it in some boric acid and alcohol. Um, the boric acid and alcohol mixture is uh, to pr help prevent fire scale on the general piece. And then for the seam itself, use a little bit of flux on your seam. I'm just going to put some on my soldering pick and then put it on the seam. And then I'm going to take a piece of solder and put it right on the char charcoal block. And then I'm going to set the seam right on top and center it right on that piece of solder. I use a neutral flame. You don't want to go too uh, hot, hot like that or too bushy. It's too much gas, not enough air, so something just, and it's a small thing so we don't need much. Let's turn it down a little. Okay, I think something like that's good. So we're going to just um, heat. The flux is going to bubble and then it'll settle back down. I am going to heat the charcoal block in front of my seam. 
more than I'm going to heat the actual piece of silver because I don't want to melt the silver. And I want the, the charcoal block underneath it to get hot. And in a minute, that is going to get up to a red heat and that piece of solder will flow and use capillary action to go right up that seam. So I'm, I'm heating in front of my bezel versus on the bezel, which would tend to... Um, then I'm going to use my flame to draw around the bezel. Let's see, there it went. There we got a good flow. Okay, all soldered. But to go at it slowly rather than quickly because you can really melt things quickly too. So I'm putting that in a pickle. In our case, we use it a, I believe it's an ascorbic acid, non-toxic, basically vitamin C pickle bath. Here's a piece of silver, sterling silver. It's a nice piece of shank material. There's no rule about it, but I wouldn't go under maybe a millimeter and a half on the thickness. This is about five millimeters wide by 1.9, almost two millimeters thick. That's a very sturdy ring, it's nice, but silver is soft. So if you use a one millimeter shank, you're gonna have a softer you're going to have a ring that could misshape. Um, I know I need to split this shank. I've split one end of it. I'm going to split the other end for you now. You want to mark a line down the middle of your material. I use a divider. These are a great tool. You want to, everybody needs a nice little divider. That way you can do this without having to use numbers. You just take your divider, find the middle, and make a line. Now to make sure you're in the middle, flip it around and come from the other side. Because you could be off a little, but as long as you hit the mark in between those two lines, you're in the center. I use a saw blade here. Let's zoom out a little bit. You can see my saw frame. Use your bench pin. I probably have a 2 watt blade in here. You can use, don't use too thin. It'll tend to wander and not go straight. The thicker the material, the bigger the gauge of blade you use. Um, protect your fingers by keeping them uh, beyond the apex of the V. You don't want them out here because if you slip this will slice you to the bone. So let's just keep your fingers back. Use your wood to support your piece and then I'm just going to cut and try to follow my center line. I used a little lubrication, a little bit of beeswax here I have. You can use whatever type of wax you want. Um, and I'm just going to start sawing, watching my line, keeping the saw perpendicular. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. Let the saw blade do the work. If it gets dull, replace it. If it breaks, replace it. You will break them. As you cut along, get it to where you can support both ends of your piece with your wood. And as you can, move your finger out to get um, both ends secured. That way you, you reduce chatter. Just keep sawing along. Adjust for straightness. I don't really know how much of a split I need. I'm just doing about the same on both ends. Okay, so now I have a split on both ends. This is a little bit hard, this material. It has not been annealed. But I can start the bending process anyway. Do we want to open the split a little bit before we start to bend it around? And I think we do. Okay, so I'm gonna use, I just have this little screwdriver and I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna kind of lever it back and forth a little bit. And uh, let my tool do more of the work than my fingers because my fingers are not happy all the time, so. Then we go to the other side and do a little bit of levering with your tool. You can use whatever tool you like. There, got a nice split started. We probably are going to need more split on one side because we need room to move around, don't we? I'm going to cut a little further on one side, further in, because it's just going to have to have more material that I can bend. So here we go. Kind of adjust. It's very soft material. A lot of times bezel is fine silver, which is even softer than sterling silver. I'm just sort of pushing 
the silver against the stone, see if I can even up the shape a little bit. So yeah, I like it. Right where you've got gaps in there. See, I've got some gaps in there. So you, you work on that for a little bit and you get it right where you want it. We're going to solder it to some sheet. A couple things you do before you do that. You always need a nice flat surface when you're doing a soldering. So take a piece of emery Put your bezel on it and you know rub it back and forth to flatten out and flip it around because you're going to get pressure and it's going to um, make your uh, whole plane slope a bit. So you want to do that. It's pretty good. Now um, I'm going to do the same thing to the piece of sheet that I'm going to solder it onto. I'm going to flatten that out. This also cleans the surface. A clean, grease-free surface will solder better. So now when I put that there, I have a good, I have a, I have a pretty good, oh, I've got a little bit of a rock there. I'm going to just do a little additional sand here. Oh yeah, that's better. You can do it right on this charcoal block. That is fine. It is easier to overheat the top of the bezel and melt it by accident. So be super careful when we do that. Um, some people will take it and put it on a, elevate it on a screen so that you can heat from underneath. That's a really good method too. And make sure we've got that at the base here around the, where the joint will actually be. Make sure you've got enough flux there. Okay. And then make sure that the bezel's not hanging off one side or the other where you don't want it to be. I'm going to dry off some of that flux because it tends to get a little bit bubbly. Um, I'm going to take my solder, place it right at the on the sheet at the base of the joint. Okay, we've got two pieces of solder there. You could use more. I don't think we'll need it. You actually usually want to put it on one side and the other, but this way you can see both pieces. And uh, I'm going to use my flame to draw the solder where I want it to. So I am heating around the piece. I'm not heating my bezel. I don't want to overheat that and melt it. I'm going to make sure that solder is pushed up against that seam. And I'm going to heat around the piece so that the um, bezel itself doesn't overheat. It's thin and it's you know up there in the air, so it's going to heat up quick and could overheat. The sheet that the bezel is on is thicker and it's in contact with the soldering block, so it's going to be a heat sink. So let's heat up around that area instead of on the bezel. Keep your flame moving and um, see this piece of solder is not in the right place, so push it over there. Oh, better. Okay, and this one probably could move a little bit. Okay, there. that's why solder picks are handy. Now that's better contact. Um, Lost a little heat doing that. Let's build it back up. Keep building it. And keep moving your flame. That's how you control your heat. And we're getting up to temperature here. The metal is, the flux is melted. Here goes the solder. We're up to about a low glow of red. Watch the solder. It's going to capillary action right around the base. Watch that. Here it goes. Oh yes, very nice. Oh, I like it. Okay. So while we're waiting for the, the pickling of our bezel, let's form this, this piece of metal. Now we have a little more of a split on one end, a little less on the other. It's kind of stiff, but we can get some bend out of it before we anneal it. So we don't want to just, you know, we want to take every step as far as we can. So I'm going to use a piece of leather and these forming pliers that have a V and a um, curved basically anvil there and I'm going to use these forming pliers. Use the, the um, leather to reduce tool marks. So the tool marks that are most concerning are the outside of this plier. You've got these corners here and those are going to put gouges in the outside of your ring. So let's put the leather on the outside of the curve. And then we're going to just use 
Put some pressure. You gotta use quite a bit of pressure here. And you can you could also do this by hammering the sheet of your ring shank material. You could do it with um, a different type of plier. You can hammer it around a ring mandrel. I use these pliers because I have them and I like them. They're pretty standard, standard issue stuff. They won't bend the very end as well because it just doesn't have quite enough material to catch. But let's go around over on the other side. And it will put a little bit of a, a bias or a taper to it because these things that come in at uh, interesting angles, right? So you want to make sure you flip it around and do the same, you know, to compensate for the taper. I'm going to anneal this now so that we can bend it further easily. We may anneal it a few times in this process because that's how you get your metal to move. To anneal, do the same um, boric acid and alcohol dip. I happen to have another torch here, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's going to be better for this annealing. You could do it with a mini torch. I'd like to use a bigger torch when I have the opportunity for bigger things. So I'm going to get a flame going, a neutral flame. That's too much um, gas. See the yellow? That's too much gas. That's too much air. So let's go kind of in the middle and get something that has maybe just the bare hint of a yellow tip, but not much. You don't want a an oxidizing flame because that tends to introduce oxygen to your surface and that um, creates fire scale and then not enough air and you'll have too cool of a flame to get the job done. But I'm moving the flame back and forth. I'm heating up the charcoal block uh, and not just the metal because the charcoal block is our heat sink and we want to make sure we heat evenly and that'll help get that heat uh, reflecting back up into the bottom edge. These little arms out here are going to heat up quickly so you don't want to melt them so you want to focus your heat on the main part of the shank and on the charcoal block bring it up to a dull red and hold it for about 20 seconds and then quench it. And what you're doing is when we bent it or you hammer it, you're compressing molecules together and they, it gets rigid and stiff. They don't want to bend. When you heat it, it they all relax and go back into sort of their original orientation, which has more space. And now we've got the right color. Hold it around that color for a little bit. And then when you quench it, you're going to freeze them in their nice, newly aligned arrangement, which will give us the ability to bend it because it will be softer. Okay, there we go. I like that. Just um, let it come down in temperature a hair and then quench it. Ooh, sizzle. We need to cut all of this extra material off of that bezel. <laughs> Don't accidentally cut too close and cut into the base of your bezel because then you'll have a divot that you have to file out or something. But, you know, cut as close as you can. Watch your fingers. That is that. So I have some extra material I have to get rid of on this uh, around the base. Uh, you can do that by filing. I'm going to take some of it off with this Mizzy wheel before I file. Don't get it, don't gouge anything by accident. Use a dust mask for this operation. Um, use long strokes, don't stay in one spot very long. That speeded that up. Then uh, come in with your file. And long, long strokes, just clean it up. Then after you do that all around and get it nice and even, you would come in with your emery stick and clean it up further. 
we have the bigger split over here. We're going to want to bring it up. We have a longer side and a shorter side, maybe. Or maybe they're the same length and they just bend different. So first, let's continue with bending this around. Okay, so I'm just going to... And it's going to bend much easier now because we've annealed it. Now let's, oops, see I got that too much bending there, but we can unbend that a little bit there. Keep things as symmetrical as you can until you don't want them symmetrical, but you want that to be intentional. Finish up here. What do we have? We have that. Look at that. Okay, so what do we know we need? We know we need this to be wider. So let's take that, um, this thing, this uh, screwdriver, and see if we can pry it open a bit. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, now this is why we've got this bezel made, so we can just set it in there and see what it's looking like. Okay, now we're getting, getting a little bit further along. Okay, well, let's see. It's going to have to go further down in, so we have the room to do the curling around it. How do we do that? I uh, could do it different ways. So a lot of operations we're going to do here. We're going to probably thin these so that they curve well for us. We're going to thin it in here, contour it, and we're going to lastly we'll work on notching the bezel to fit into the, sort of the contours. But let's work on this shank first. Okay? Look like what we want it to look like. We got to do something. So how do we do it? Hmm. I'm going to use this inverted cone burr. I think that might give us some good grinding action. The toothy burrs like to catch and grip and then they chatter and then they mar your metal. So something like this big one here, it looks like it would be a good idea, but this is a real catchy burr and it would not be the right shape for what we're doing anyway. But be careful of these catchy burrs. So I'm going to come in here I'm going to support the work, support my thumb, and I'm going to use feathering strokes. Stop and look at what you're doing occasionally. Go to the other side and do some of this. You can put some wax on that burr too. Let's see what that looks like. Oh. Yes. Now, now look what we've done. Just with that little bit of grinding, we've cr started to create a nice um, seat, curving place for this curving bezel to be. I'm not going to do any more right there. I think that looks really good. So let's let's thin this down over here. Because what we need to do is finish this out nice and so smooth. You can do that with a file. You can do it with a sanding disc. Let's see. Um, I might come in with a file and do something like this. Try and smooth that out because the burrs leave it a little choppy, right? We don't want that. You can see how smooth you're getting it by looking at the reflection. It needs a bit of work here. I know you're supposed to go only one direction with the file, but um, it's a small space and it's hard to do. Holding the work steady, embracing my hand. Now, I like it. Um, we've got a, some more work to do kind of throughout. We have to detail all of this, but we'll get to it. You don't have to see every bit of what I do. Just know that it has to happen, right? Okay. One end is going to wrap around the bezel, and one end is going to wrap beyond. So they're going to do like a this sort of thing. So we know we're going to want these to be a little pointier. I'm going to just clip these corners off, and then we can finish it with a file. How's that for down and dirty? It's supposed to clip. Come on, clip. There we go. Okay, that's good. I'm going to come in with a file and um, support the work a little bit. There, that's a good way to support the work. And I'm going to smooth this out and make a nice gradual, because my clip was an angle. I don't want an angle. I want a nice gradual. So I think that's looking good. I think what needs to happen is I need to thin these arms a little bit uh, from the inside toward the ends. Th out here. 
Yes, that needs to kind of come out there. And this one needs to be thinner there. We don't want it to be clunky after all. Okay, so I'm going to take more off the inside of the Y or the split. We're hitting our flexible shaft, so let's just pull this burr out a hair, give us a little more clearance. Make sure it's still straight. Okay, I don't want to bend your shaft, but I need a little more clearance there. Yeah, that'll work better. Okay. Oh, there it went, and I didn't have it buried well enough. Okay. Rebury that end a little. At this point, I'm going to open it up with to get a little more grace in the curve. I'm going to use my half round pliers, put the rounded side out, and get um, curve against it a little so I get a little more curve. In there, same, flip it around, curve this out a little bit. We want this one to come close and this one to come out. Okay, so what I've done is I've started to bend this arm in with my handy bending pliers. And I like what I'm seeing. So this will come in here and we're going to keep fitting, uh, fitting it more, but I like that. So what else do we need to do here? We're going to, well, we're doing pretty well there. I'm not going to bend the other, this arm yet. All right, let's work on this side a little bit. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to cut some metal here, cut here. We're going to do a little thinning and contouring here out the at the end to get some grace to it because you don't want it to be clunky and junky. Let's grace it up a bit. I like it. Actually, since these are outside curves, it's going to be way easier to use that Mizzy wheel. So let's do that. The Mizzy wheel is just a grinder. It's a little baby grinding wheel. We couldn't really get it inside uh, the split, but we can get it on the outside. So let's do that. Okay, here we go. think of uh, making jewelry as making sculpture. You know, this is just a little baby sculpture, a little bit of wearable sculpture. And so you just approach it like that and, and decide your steps. And <laughs> My dad was a master wood carver, and he would carve those, um, you know, a ball inside of a cage out of one piece of wood and you go, how did you do that? How did you get that ball inside that cage? Well, he just, he said, all you do is carve away everything that doesn't look like a ball. Oh, I thought that was so clever. But um, it's a little, little simplistic, but let's just carve away what doesn't look graceful and what doesn't look like our ring that we want it to look like. So I'm just thinning that a little bit. We were gonna thin on this side. It'll make it easier to bend too, that's for sure. If you can get the tool in there. Yeah, on this one I can. I can clip that corner right off. I think I can clip this corner right off. Indeed. Clip off. Come on, there we go. Now you should wear eye protection when you use any of these things, especially these cutting discs. They can really uh, break and little chips can fly right out of there. So let's see, where are we here? Right about there, okay. I'm just gonna grind this corner. Okay, flip it around. Brace your fingers, brace your work. So what we want this to do is just do a little flare. We're gonna take those magic pliers, we're gonna put the curve out because that's where you want the curve. You don't want tool marks. I'm just going to put a little flare on that. That looks nice. Okay. See that flare? Yeah, I like that. Let's do it on the other side. Maybe go down a little further. 
into the V. Okay. Let's see right about there. Okay. That looks pretty good. There we go. So we're taking a piece of straight material and we're making some nice graceful curves. And it's just a step at a time, sort of evaluating all along the line what you're doing. I, I can see where we're going here. So let's, let's keep going. It's going to be time to do a little trimming on this bezel um, to get it to fit into this curve better. So I'm putting an angle on one end of this bezel. So I'm coming at, not straight with the file, but I'm putting a bit of an angle toward one end. And then I'm going to go flip it around and put it on the other side in a commensurate place so that it's going to fit into the V of that split shank a little better and see what happens. And um, you can continue with the file. I'm going to take this cutting disc because that is my jam and it's going to go faster. But it's a dangerous little tool because it goes very fast and then you kind of have lost you take off too much material, you can't get it back. So, so I'm just looking at it. I'm deciding, just as I look at it here, what needs to happen. I can see what needs to happen as well. We need to take this split wider and then curve it too. See, we're doing all this stuff sort of simultaneously. We're feeling our way through the fit of this piece. I'm going to open it up here a little bit. See, I'm going to torque out that a little bit. On the other side, flip my pliers. I'm going to torque this out a little bit. It's a bit of strength required here. Torque that out and then try it. Better to start out with some nice material and give yourself something to work with, especially since we're doing sculpture here. Okay, let's see if that helps our cause. Um, more up on this part of the curve. Let's see what we can do. Boom, okay. We need, you know what we need to do? We need to anneal it. That's why once I anneal it, I will be able to get this curve to curve out down here and back in right there and cradle this thing beautifully. Annealing is your friend, okay? The traditional way to raise metal, for example, is you take a piece of sheet metal and then you go ahead and start hammering it against a a metal form called a stake and you hammer and hammer and hammer and then it gets hard and you compress and stretch and do things to create the shape you want but all along the way after you do a course of raising a course of hammering all throughout the piece then you will anneal the whole piece and quench it and start over and you can take a flat sheet of material and make it into a beautiful bowl or a pan or a teapot uh, just by continually hammering and annealing uh, until you you get it to do your bidding man just make that metal do what you want so now i've got it up to temperature i'm just going to hold it there use my flame move it around don't overheat it's plenty hot enough to do with the annealing right now it's probably a little over hot well the screen on the video always shows it a little redder than it is so now i'm going to just let it cool briefly um, and then we'll throw it in the pickle pot okay Psh, sizzle pie here's our piece now as i said we want to make this bend in two places we have to create space for this bezel now also it'll give us a nice beautiful curve so i'm going to take this here and I'm just going to bend it out. Oh, look how easy. Why was I fighting it? Okay, then up here, we're going to come up here. And we're going to curve this in a little. Ooh, how about we just give it a, another cut with the saw? It's a little more material to play with in that arm. Okay. That's a decision we're making on the fly. But that means I can bend it out a little further a little further down in the and it'll be pretty soft 
I can lever this out a little bit. There we go. Okay, I like that. So I'm just kind of playing with this curve. So this is coming along well. Can you see that fit there? Yeah, yeah, that is good. That's good. So now I want to take this arm and pull it a little bit out. Yeah, let's see if we can pull this in a little bit. And curve this tip here. This tip is going to kind of cradle the little colored stone, the little garnet. Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah, okay, then let's take and um, pull this side in with our forming pliers. So if we go at the bottom of the ring shank and just kind of go along, it's going to pull these two sides of the ring together um, pretty well. Ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. Let's see. So, oh yeah, look at that. Dang. You're pretty good. Okay, now, wow. Now look what we have. We have what we drew. We got a really beautiful uh, shape here. Look at this relationship. Nice. Dang, okay. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to bring this curve in a little bit here. I'm going to fit this um, bezel in better, make a little bit more space for our garnet. So I'm going to do a lot of this work now without bothering you because that's just the detail work. I'm going to make decisions like, am I going to soften this edge and round these? Am I going to leave it a little more sharp? Um, those are just decisions you make as you go along. What does it look like you should do? I'm going to make maybe accentuate these joints with a little bit of flared V's and a lot of details like that. But all of these surfaces have to be smooth, sh clean, shine, polished, all that stuff. So get it busy with your files, get busy with your, your rubber wheels, your sanding discs, and uh, finesse your little contours and things. And I've got my bezel placed where I like it, and I'm going to attempt to get it all soldered together. Now, I'm dropping down my solder temperature from hard to a medium hard or a medium, depending on what you have. I'm going to flex. I don't need to flex my joints here where it's, I want my solder to be. You can use, do very delicate work with a very large torch and vice versa. Um, I didn't have a mini torch for the first 30 years I did this. So. so the idea is, again, you're going to want a neutral kind of flame, a little bit overall, a little bushier than you might think. Um, dry off your flux. It's going to maybe move your piece, your bezel a little, and then, but make sure it gets settled back in where you want it. I've got my solder already cut. I'm going to... Um, oops, I forgot a couple solder joints. Look at that. This one's a solder joint right here. Get some flux on these. So you can see how as you go along, you just make choices, decisions, um, evolve your design. It, doesn't have to be all set out in stone, just kind of evolve it as you go. I'm going to initially, oops, drop some solder, that's never good, let's get some more. Uh, place it on this joint here, that one. I'm going to place some, don't need tons of solder, these are small joints, you just need small pieces. And a piece of solder there. Okay. Uh, this one is going to be important right there. So let's um, get a little ball of solder right there. Got, you know what? I can tell my torch is too hot. Let's back it down a little. Okay. Uh, I just didn't like the, the feeling of not being in control of that torch. So I'm going to put a piece of solder right here. I'm going to put a piece of solder over here. Oops, that wasn't a lot of Okay, I've got solder everywhere I want it. Now I'm going to gently heat my piece. Maybe a little bushier flame there. Heat it all over. 
just watch your color. Um, watch for the flux to first get, first it bubbles, then it dries, and then it gets glassy. Now I've got thin spots and thick spots here, so let's just keep that flux, uh, flame moving, and then um, move it around. I'm coming from underneath because I want to draw that solder from the top down through the seams. Now look, getting red hot. I have that solder about ready to go. It doesn't all have to go at once. You can kind of pinpoint seams. Once you get your heat up, now I'm going to this front seam right here, right here, and it's going to, it's flowing already from underneath and draw it down there. Oop, we've got a lot of things going at once there. Okay, good. Nice. Okay. Let's come over to this side. This this one didn't go very Heat over there, keep the flame moving. Oops, that one went. Okay, good. And then the only one left is over here. Now, since this is all um, soldered together, I can tip this now and I can heat this one without worrying about you know, it's not going to heat up the other side as bad, and I should be able to get this one to flow. I'm careful not to melt my bezel. I don't want to do that. So I'm getting my flame not. Um, so I'm going to bring this flame down a little bit there. Uh, maybe get a little bit of flux there. Okay, let me get this to go now. Can we see? Oh yeah, you can see it. Bring the heat up, keep the flame moving, and I'm going to bring it over here, you bring it from underneath. Watch your hair though. That should be going. Okay, come on. You can do it. Bring it back up top. There we go. Alright. Started to go. a little stubborn that it flowed, it just, uh, you know, it's, it's hot long enough it may have gotten the skin. Sometimes solder gets a little skin on it, and it's a skin of oxides. And if that happens, you want to stop um, and pickle and start over uh, with your heating because that, you can't get that to go, but I think we're there. We have a ring. We have a ring. It's all soldered together. Looks like our drawing. And then it has a space right here to put the little garnet. I'm going to do that after. We'll finish the whole ring up. Get it all polished because I'm going to put a little gold bezel in here. And that'll be the last soldering we do. I am super happy with this. We're in really good shape. We look like our drawing largely. We know the stone fits. We need to proceed with all of the cleanup and and decision making about how we're going to detail this. I am going to put a little bit of a, a V groove on these seams to accentuate them. I think I may give a little bit of rounding to these edges. So I need to round up my ring shank, do all this stuff. So I'm going to do all this stuff. It's just a matter of deciding what tool to use. Uh, definitely when you are deciding on tools, match the shape of your tool to the task that you're trying to do. For example, if you want to put a nice finished curve on this inside curve, don't take a tiny little round needle file to do it. It's too little. Uh, it's a waste of effort. It's not the right shape. Use a nice big half round file and match that curve and take your long strokes. If you're going to use a rubber wheel, for example, or if you want to use a, if you want to use a drum sander inside your ring shank, use one that is big enough to be effective rather than um, something like this one is going to, this one's okay, but if you could choose the shape, Use the one that will be more efficient and cover your shape and match what you're trying to achieve better. 
So you just make sure you do that with all of the choices you make and all of the tools you use. Don't use a tiny one to do a big area. Use a bigger one to do a big area. This is a nice hard felt. This is a good one for um, finishing up a curve like in here. This, this would be a good thing to finish these outside contours with so that you're being efficient if you use a tiny little wheel like this and you come in and you're trying to finish big surfaces like that you end up getting divots and uneven surfaces so they all have to get cleaned up in the long run